Hi guys, hi everyone. Uh, great to, to be here again, guys. As some of you guys already commented, it's day five today, uh, this week of the live. So all week uh, we've been doing these lives and solving problems. And fortunately today is going to be the last day, but not the last day of the year. So as you guys mentioned a lot, uh, in the previous lives that you really enjoyed them. So I'll try to do more of these lives sometime this year. All right. And if you're excited about that, go ahead and comment. Yes. And go ahead and say hi in the chat. Let us know who's joining us here today. Uh, so we have, uh, Elicio. Awesome. You're on time. It's great to see a lot of you guys here. You know, you guys been with me this whole week and you just awesome to see you guys. You guys are committed. This is dedication. You guys are committed and it's amazing. So we, what I'm really going to try to do this year, guys, is just help you to make sure that you guys stay consistent right uh, and make sure that you guys don't lose that motivation like we talked about yesterday you know at the beginning you might have that motivation you're excited you're like let's do this i want to pass this year right and then you know january comes around february and then you feel you you start losing motivation right and if this happened to you before uh, let me know in let me know in the chat but uh, and also let me know if you guys can hear me because sometimes uh, that happens but I, I can see so we have a lot of you guys here which is awesome so we have Alicio we have Miriam hi Richard hi Kyle hi Mohammed uh, let's see Crystal hi good to see you again Ifa hi Ifa we got your message Ifa uh, stay till the end I want to address uh, the the your uh, email about the statics course if you don't mind I have some things I would like to share with you so go ahead and stay till the end and I'll, I'll let you know Know my thoughts on that we have Yemen we have George we have Cornelius hi good to see you here it's been a while so I see a lot of you guys names uh, it's familiar so I know I know you guys those who are our students so uh, we have Amrali hi Amrali I hope you're doing well today uh, we have Ludlin so it's good to see you here again and then Shema we have Russell we have Harold Oksana Cliff Ola Ellen, awesome guys, amazing. We have Melanie, hi Melanie. Great, great to see you guys here. That's amazing. Thank you for joining me. Um, and again, I am going to do my best to do more lives this year just to help you guys, you know, stay on track, keep you guys uh, motivated, right? Till you pass your FE. That's the end goal. You should not stop studying until you get your FE, okay? And then in the other thing, so what I want to do today, because it's the last day of the live, um, I'm going to do, we're going to do some problems. So we're going to actually do a little bit more than we did the four days. So we're going to do two, three problems today. Uh, and the reason I, I, I wanted to do that is because it's very common, all these three, they're common on the FE and you're probably only going to get one of them. Either you're going to get a beam or a truss or frame. And I want to make sure that you guys are covered and ready for your FE. So we'll go ahead and cover some concepts and then start solving the problems. But the other thing I would like to also talk about at the end after this live is that I noticed... Um, or after solving the problems, I noticed yesterday I asked you guys what's your biggest struggle when it comes to passing the FE and you guys had a lot of um, concerns and a lot of good points that you guys mentioned in the live. So I, I, I know I hit some of them, I answered some of them, I addressed some of those struggles, but I know I could, I didn't get the chance to address the other ones. So stick around and you can share with me at the end what's the, what are the things you struggle with. I'll try to answer as many questions that you guys have or help you as much as I can and then whatever I can I won't be able to do today I'll go ahead and create some videos on those topics and I'll share them on our channel so that you are ready to tackle this exam and just you know pass it right so this is the year where all of you guys will pass your FE all right okay guys so if you have don't have any questions for me so far we're gonna go ahead and get started so let me go ahead and share my screen here so give me a few minutes and also guys as you know always right Make sure that you guys solve these problems with me, okay? So don't, so again, it's just like we did previously in the lives. If you're a student, right, we already covered these sub topics. If you did get into the structural analysis section, then go ahead and start solving the problem uh, if you know how to solve it. If you, if, once you get the answer, let me know in the chat, okay? Let me know in the comments what you got. Now, um, for those of you guys who haven't covered this, these uh, 
concept yet just follow along with me okay uh, try to learn as much as you can try to grasp as much concepts as you can and then something again i always tell you guys is once we're done today and once you go through these problems and you understand them then later today maybe or even tomorrow come back and rewatch these problems right just because you got it today it doesn't mean it's gonna stick it doesn't mean you're gonna remember it for your fe right and so that's why this it's very important to review 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 right it's practice and reviewing so maybe tomorrow or Sunday when you come back to this problem uh, do it on your own see if you're able to actually figure it out on your own and if you can't then check the solution and make sure that you got it and then maybe next week if you did get it wrong we do it again next week just to make sure okay I actually finally understood it right so it's very important it's about reviewing and doing problems all right guys okay all right, so uh, let's take a look at this here. So, so this is common, guys, for um, uh, FE civil, mechanical, and other disciplines, okay? Uh, we have Elysio. Is this one considered a truss or a frame? Elysio, so this is a beam, right? So here we have a beam, uh, right? Uh, and so, so let me just show you an example, Elysio. So this is going to be a beam. This here is going to be a truss, right? And then here you're going to have a frame, okay? All right, so that's that's the differences between these these three. Okay, guys. So now, when we have have to find the stability of a beam, the thing is, the, these equations that I, ha I have for you guys here, they're not on the reference handbook. Okay, so this is something that you have to make sure that you add to your cheat sheets and make sure you remember it for your FE exam. Now, the thing is, because you might be wondering, like, well, why is this not on the reference handbook and, and it might be on the exam, right? I actually did get a beam on my exam. Uh, not, not exactly this one. Uh, but so the thing is why these equations are not on the reference handbook, it's because uh, you should just be able to know them. It's almost, I'm going to explain it and it's going to make sense. It's like almost... Um, I don't want to say it's it's logical, but but that I think that's the reason why they didn't mention it on the reference handbook. Uh, but let's go over these equations, make sure that you guys grasp them and understand them. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do here is go over these equations. Okay. Let me go ahead and do blue. So we have here R. So that's the number of reactions, right? First, you have to count how many reactions you have. Reaction forces. And then what we do is we compare it to this side of the equation, which is three plus C. C is the hinges, how many hinges you have in, in the beam, okay? Now, the thing is, so can, can someone tell me, first of all, why do we have this three in this equation, okay? Where does this three come from, right? So again, this is why I always ask, I tell you guys, make sure you really understand what you're doing, right? Don't just grab the equation. Ask yourself, why is there a three here? Why is there this equation, you know? D these are going to help you to have a better understanding of, of these concepts, okay? Now, three equations. Yes, great work, Alicio. So because we have three equilibrium equations, that's why we have a three, right? So what this means is that, right? Let's, let's take a look at that, this. So if I have a simply supported beam, right? How many reaction forces we have here? We're going to have three, right? Because we have a, a pin has two, a roller has one, right? So that means I'm going to have three reaction, right? But I have three equilibrium equations, right? The summation of the forces on the X, summation of the forces on the Y, and then the summation of the moment. Because I have three unknowns, three equations, I can easily solve for the unknowns, which makes this beam to be stable, right? Now, if I add any other roller, this beam is no longer stable. It's indeterminate, right? It's stable, but it's indeterminate, right? But it's, it's but which, so what's going to happen is that we can't solve, we can't use statics to solve for this exact beam, right? Because now it's indeterminate by one degree, right? So now let's go back to our equation here. C, why do we have C? Why do we have this C? That's the first question I have for you guys. And then why did we add it to this side of the equation? Can anyone tell me why? So I'll give you guys a few minutes here to process that. A lot of you guys have answered my other question. There, there's a lag a little bit with the YouTube, but you guys will get there. Um, so why do we have a C here? And then why did we add it to this equation? What does, when we have a hinge in a beam, right? What does that do? Okay, so for example, if we take a look at this beam that we have here, we added that hinge. What did it do to our equation? So 
C, right? So when we add a hinge into a structure or into a beam, it reduces, right, the indeterminacy. So for example, here, let's go back to this example, this beam. If I go ahead and add, so we said already, right? So if, uh, let me actually redraw it so it's not confusing for those who just joined us right now, right? So this beam here, we said that we have four reactions, right? Four is greater than three, which means it's gonna be indeterminate, right? By one degree, okay? Still stable, but it's indeterminate. And we can't use statics to solve for these reaction forces, okay? Now, if I go ahead and add a hinge, what's gonna happen, right? Now it's gonna become stable and determinate, right? Because this hinge, adding a hinge, it reduces the indeterminacy. Does that make sense, everyone? Let me know, guys, if this makes sense, okay? So then, uh, let's see. So, so then if we add the hinge here, now we're going to have four reactions, right? And then the other side of the equation, we're going to have three plus one, right? Which is going to give us four. So now they're equal. So we're going to have a stable and determinate structure. So this is why we add the hinge, and this is why we add it to this side of the equation, okay? Because it's, 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 it's another condition, right? It gives us another equation that we can use to solve for the end mills, okay? Now, let's go back to our problem now that we have all those concepts, and then let's go ahead and tackle this, this example here. So did you guys solve it? Let me know what you guys got. Um, if you guys solved it, let me know your answer in the chat. But so what we're going to have here, so we're going to have r so i'll just let me solve the problem here so we're gonna have r right um how many reaction forces do we have here so we have one two and then the moment right so this is going to be uh three here here we have two right and then here we have one okay so that's six six reaction forces and i think somebody got it george great work so george got that uh so now we have six right now we have to compare it to the other side of the equation which is three plus one, right? Which is gonna give us four, okay? So now, what does this mean? Well, this is greater than this side of the equation, right? Which means we're gonna have an indeterminate structure. Now, the question is, by how many degrees, right? Well, to determine the degrees of indeterminacy, we just do six minus four, and so that's gonna give us two, so the answer is going to be D, okay? So going back to what I was saying earlier, this example here, guys, that we have, we can't use statics to solve for it because it's indeterminate by two degrees. So to s solve for the reactions for this beam, we would have to use either the slope deflection method or the moment distribution method. Now, you don't have to know those methods for your FE exam. This is more advanced and this is more for the, F the PE, right? So when you uh, start studying for your PE, you would have to learn those methods to be able to solve for the indeterminate structures, okay? And then who knows, maybe one day I'll teach you guys that in the PE course when I launch my PE courses, okay? All right, do we have any other questions so far? Does this make sense, okay? So it just, again, just quickly to, um, to make it, to explain it more. So if we add another hinge, right, into this beam, right, we're gonna have an indeterminate by only one degree. Because again, what does a hinge do, right? It reduces the indeterminacy of the structure, okay? Let me know if you guys got that. And this is, again, it's important, guys, to ask yourself questions when you're doing problems, right? Because whatever you're studying right now, most likely, it's not gonna be exactly the same as on your exam. And you probably know that. For those of you guys who've taken your FE exam a couple of times and you failed it, you probably were like, like damn, I've, you know, I've never seen that question before. Or they, they asked me, it was similar to what I studied, but it was slightly different and I, would, I just didn't know how to solve it, right? And that's, that's why it's very important to really make sure that one, you understand what you're doing, right? You just don't, don't just grab an equation and apply it. Ask yourself, why is there a three here? Why are we adding a C? What does a hinge do to the equation, right? What if I add a hinge? How does that gonna change this whole problem, right? Is the three question that we talked about yesterday. Always when you're studying, ask yourself, what if, right? What if we're giving this instead? What if we have this instead? How would I solve it? Why are we using this equation, right? And then, um, and then I, I forgot the third step, but you guys can go back to the yesterday's live and then uh, watch it. But do we have any questions about this so far? If not, I'll go ahead and move to the trust, okay? Oh, and then the other thing, guys, if you're not sure about the reactions and why the, the, the fixed beam, 
um, like here fixed end, right? We have three reaction forces. The, the pin here has two rollers. So again, we cover these concepts in our cheat sheets, right? So here we have those concepts. We talk about it. Uh, like if you guys remember the hinge, uh, we don't have, um, the moment is zero for a hinge and the pin and a roller, right? But it, we do have uh, like the restriction in the X and Y direction, right? But it's free to rotate. Uh, so that's why the moment is zero for the pin, hinge and roller. So make sure that you guys review these concepts. If you don't have this cheat sheet, comment below cheat sheet and we'll send it to you. And I know some of you guys uh, also have ha having trouble downloading it or you're not getting it to your email, just shoot us an email, we'll send it to you directly, okay? We wanna make sure that you guys get that cheat sheet. Now, let's move to the trust. So, go ahead and start solving it. If you know how to solve it, let me know the answer in the comment, okay? Now, uh, so here, right, the trust, uh, this should be shown. So, we have this trust, right? And we wanna determine if it's unstable, stable, indeterminate, or indeterminate. And if it is indeterminate, we wanna know by how many degrees. This is actually, for those of you guys who joined us yesterday in the live, this is the problem that we solved to find the zero force members, right? Except we had the, the forces in it, if you guys remember. And when we were doing the problem yesterday, I was actually curious uh, to know if this truss was indeterminate or stable. And so I was like, you know what? Let's solve that together today, okay? So to solve for this problem, you guys don't need to really remember any equations for your FE exam because they are giving to you here on the reference handbook. Now, the tricky part is if you are taking mechanical and other disciplines, you might not think about coming to this section because this is structural analysis and this is mostly for civil students, right? But just something to remember. So if you are taking mechanical other disciplines, just remember that these equations are under structural engineering and your civil engineering, okay? All right, so, so here we have the equations for the truss and then we have the equations for the frame, okay? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna move it here because I do not know these equations uh, like very well. I think it's gonna move. So I'll just move it to this side and then let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and write the equation and in the meantime, you guys go ahead and give this problem a try. So this one, again, it's very simple. This one, straightforward. So all you need to do is just apply the, 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 the equation. So go ahead and solve it. Let me know what you guys got. So I need to know what, do you guys, what did you guys get for the members? What about the reactions? And then the joint, okay? So that we can apply this equation. Go ahead, give it a try. Let me know what you guys got. In the meantime, I wanna answer someone's question. AK, does the hinge provide a vertical force only? So AK, so when we, when we add, um, it does provide actually, so when you are solving, right? So if we go back to this problem, AK, and if we try to solve for the reaction forces, let's say, um, let's see, I think this one, let's, let's, let's go over this one, right? So if you have to find the reaction forces here, right? What would we do here is we would cut to this point, okay? And then we would go like this, and then we would have a force here and then force here, and this way we have less unknowns and we can easily solve for the reaction forces, okay? Now, so the, the thing is, when we are dealing with the internal stability of the beam, right? When we, when we have an internal hinge, we don't count the hinge as a reaction. Good question, right? We, we count it as more as an, an extra condition or an extra equation um, that, that we get by adding the hinge in order to reduce the indeterminacy of the structure, okay? Let me know if that made sense or if it's to clarify things for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to you guys. So reactions, we have, uh, let's see, the reaction forces, we have five. Let me see, yes, that's what I got, awesome. So five members, we got nine. Everybody got nine? Okay, great work, guys. And then the joints, I got six. Is everybody got six? Okay, awesome, guys. So now, so something I wanna share with you guys because sometimes on the FE, you get this really long truss and you have to really count all the members and then you're looking at the time and you're like, I gotta hurry. So, and then sometimes what happens, uh, because it's on screen, it's not like on paper, uh, you start counting and then you're like, oh wait, did I include this diagonal member? Did I not? So what I like to do is I like to start here. So I go one and then two, and then I go now to the bottom members, three, and then four, right? And then I go five, and then six, and then seven, eight, 
and then nine. This way, I know I didn't miss any member, okay? Because this is something I really struggled with when I was studying. I would start counting and I'm like, wait, did I miss a member? And so I would have to start over. So always start from the members at the top, one, two, three, and then go to the bottom, right? And then go to the middle and then just hit the, this whole middle, okay? So that way you guys can find the answers faster. Okay, now you guys plug in these numbers in, in, in the equation, to what we're gonna have. So we have nine, right? plus the reaction, which is five. And then here we're gonna have two and we're gonna multiply it by six, okay? Two times six, that's gonna give us, um, is it, it's 12, right? And then nine plus five, that's also gonna give us, well, nine, I have 14. That's correct, 14, right? Nine plus, that's 14, okay. So now um, we have 14, which is greater than 12, right? So this means we have an indeterminate structure. And again, you know, to find the degree of indeterminacy, just like we did with the beam, all you need to do is just 14 minus 12, and that's gonna give you two, okay? So that means we have an indeterminate by two degrees, okay? All right, awesome, guys. Everybody got the answer. Okay, cool. George, you got C. Go ahead and double check your answers, okay? Make sure you, 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 you correct that. Okay, great work, guys. Ready for the frame? All right, the frame, a little bit tricky, okay? But you guys will get it after this. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so hold on. Let me see actually if I the, I have the correct multiple. Yes, I did. Okay, so um, we have two hinges, but they're slightly different, okay? Um, let's talk a little bit first about the equation. So to find, to solve for the this uh, frame, right? Again, the equation is here on the reference handbook, and I think Richard uh, is asking about that. So Richard, this is the equation for the truss. For the frame, we have the equation just right here on the same page. The only thing they're missing here, guys, is the, is the, refer uh, the equations for the beam. That one you have to remember, okay? Uh, but for the truss and the frame, they're here. So these are the equations, okay? So let's, again, like we did earlier, let me go ahead and write it down, okay? And then we can go ahead and solve it. So we're gonna have three, okay, M plus R. And for those of you guys who already know what to do, go ahead and solve it and let us know what you got, okay? It's a tricky problem. So for those of you guys who've seen my video before on, on frame, I think we have one on YouTube and we have bunch on our course. So if you have done or went through that section already, um, I would give you a hint, just be careful with this hinge here, okay? Because you have three members over there, okay? So uh, for those of you guys who are not familiar with these concepts, follow along with me. Okay, so uh, let's, let's start with members. So, and, and there are two ways we could solve this, guys. There are two different ways we can solve it. Uh, but let's just go with one, the first one, and then if you guys get confused, then I can show you guys the second method, okay? So let's go like we did earlier. Let's... Someone can tell me what's the, how many members do we have, how many reactions do we have, and then how many joints do we have, and then we can talk about the hinges last, okay? Um, let's see. What do we have here? I think we have, uh, can you use frame equations for the beams? I, I, think, I think you can. Uh, give, I think Pranita, she sent me yesterday one of the questions she answered, for the beam, she answered it, I think using the frame equation, I'm not sure, uh, but I personally just like the three plus C because it just makes sense more to, uh, for me. Uh, but but Punita, go ahead and confirm that. Can we use the frame equation for the beam? Let us know, please. Uh, and then confirm the AZ. Okay, so we have uh, M is equal to five C, the hinge six, wow, okay. And then the joint three. Okay, let's see, we have member five. Okay, so M is five. Let's see what I have. Yes, M is five. I have the same thing. What do you guys get for the reaction? Miriam, she got six. Awesome. Okay, cool. Is everybody agrees with that? What do you guys get for the joint? Okay. What do we have for the joint? Ifa, you are right, except for the joint. Okay. The joint is not three, and this is why I might have to explain the two methods. Um, or maybe double check your answer. Joint. Alicia, you got it. Joint is also gonna be six, okay? Is anyone confused about that? If you guys are confused about that, I'll have to clarify it before we go to the hinges, okay? Miriam got six, okay, that's awesome. Anybody else got six for the joints? Ifa, did you, uh, do you understand why it's six and it's not three? 
okay so let me let me walk you guys through it here so members here okay uh so we're gonna have one right two three four and then five okay guys so we have five members okay for the for the reactions i'm sure all of you guys got it right the, here we have a fixed answer so you're gonna have three the penny is gonna uh Pin is gonna have two, Waller is gonna have one, so that's gonna give you guys six, okay? I'm, sh I'm sure a lot of you guys got that. Uh, if, if you didn't, please let me know and I'll clarify it for you. For the joints, right? So the joints, we're gonna have one, right? You're gonna have a joint here between the hinge and the members, two, and then you're gonna have three, then four, then five, and then six. Did everybody get that for the joint? Very important, guys, okay? Um, okay. Yes, I'm confused, but not at this point yet. Okay, all right, great, Richard. We have t Tyler, two. So I'm getting a lot of C is equal to two, okay? So this here, let's go over the hinges. I feel like everybody just wanna know the hinges. Okay, so we have two hinges. We have one and two, technically, but hold on to that. This here, so the way we solve for the hinges when we have a frame is we take the number of members that are connected right and then we do minus one okay let me write the equation for that so c is equal to the number of members that are connected okay and then should i write connected i'll just write the whole thing so you guys can see it are connected right and then we do minus one okay this is how we find the number of members so if we take let's call this hinge a and let's call this hinge b for hinge a how many members do we have that are connected to hinge a we have two, right? So to find C for A, we're gonna do two minus one, and so that's gonna give us one hinge. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at hinge B, okay? How many members do we have connected to hinge B? We have three, right? We have this member here, we have member three, we have member four, and member five. They are all connected to hinge B, right? So we're gonna do three members, and then minus one, and that's gonna give us two. So then, that means that we're gonna have a total of three. Okay, so C is going to be three. Okay, very, very important, guys, for you to remember this and be careful on your exam. Now, I know for those of you guys who have the FE, the NCS practice exam, they have a problem on on the frame, and they have a hinge. One of the hinges is connected to three members. I remember seeing that, and I remember also looking at the solution, and I, I was a bit confused about how they solved that problem. Now that we went through this problem, go ahead and apply the same exact methods and then apply it to that problem and you will get the same answer, okay? And that's how you're gonna feel confident and you're gonna know that you're getting this stuff and you understand them, okay? It's always an amazing feeling uh, w when you do that. Okay, so let me know, does anybody get, um, can you circle the joints? I miss them. Okay, Ifa. so so the, the thing about solving this problem, so you can either, you know what, let me, I'm debating. Do you guys want to see the other method? Let me know. Because if I don't want to confuse you, but it's also important to know both methods and then you have to only select one, right? So, um, Ifa, so we have one joint here. We have the joint here at the hinge, so that's two. Then we have the joint here, that's three. Then we have a joint here, that's four. This is five. And then this is six, okay? So that's six joints. For the other method that I am I'm, I'm trying to... So I, I don't, again, I don't want to confuse you guys, but for the other method, if you don't want to include the hinge, okay, as a joint, okay, if you, if you say, if you tell me, you know what, Kenza, there are only five joints, I'll be like, okay, that's fine, but how many members do you have, right? If you, if you only have five joints, that means you have to have only five members, which means that this one, two member, you're going to include it all as one member. Does that make sense? Either you guys include this here, this hinge as a joint and you have to split this member into two, okay? Or you don't count it, okay? And then you have to count this whole thing as one member. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know if that makes sense. I was hesitant to share it, but at the same time, on the FE, you might go start solving and you go like, well, how come, sh you know, should I include this as a member? And then you might m mess up your answers. Because that, that's when you start doubting yourself. In, during the middle of the exam, you start questioning, wait, is this correct? Should I use this equation this way? Okay. All right. Does that make sense, guys? 
um let me know okay so did we get did we get to see did everybody get the hinges um no stick to the first method at least you prefer has a preference that's awesome okay guys so now let's go ahead and plug in the numbers into the equations i think some people already got the answer so we're gonna do three times five plus the reaction plus the reaction which is six right and then we're gonna do three times six and then plus three okay now for this you guys are gonna get 21 this also gonna be 21 so this means is, is gonna be equal so that means you're gonna have stable and determinate structure okay so this frame is stable okay now here's the thing if we remove this hinge right here right now we, we're gonna have an indeterminate structure right because now we're not gonna have this C anymore we're only gonna have one C which is from hinge A right so if we remove hinge B right this whole frame will become an indeterminate structure okay and by by four degrees i think that's what i have on my notes um okay all right now the answer is going to be b yes yes all right guys so alicio and for those of you guys whose problem is getting close you guys are gonna be good to solve a lot of problems after this live we covered some really good concepts so i'm really glad you guys were able to join us and uh, get you ready for for your exam so it's that last push so just power through solve as many problems challenge yourself learn as much as you can don't try to learn anything new just reinforce what you already know reinforce the problems you've covered because you don't want to stress I, I remember a couple days before i took my fe i started to do a couple new problems and I, I, my anxiety went to the roof. I was like, whoa, like I'm not ready. Like I've never seen these problems before. And, and I remember my husband was like, what are you doing? Like you, sh you should not be doing new problems. Just stick to what you know. It's, this is not the time to learn new problems. Just do the best you can right now on what you already studied, what you know, reinforce those concepts. Go take your exam and then see what happens, right? And then if you miss anything or if you don't pass, then I could keep, uh, come back and be like, okay, there are a lot of things that I didn't study. Why is that? And then I can assess and regroup, right? So just important to keep these points in mind, okay? All right, Kyle, yes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trust. So this is the trust here. Uh, so let me know again, guys, if you guys have any other questions. Um, how long before the test did you start revising the old concepts? Um, that's a good question, Kunal. Um, let's see. I remember I was, I was studying for a lot of months, and I remember I was afraid to take that exam. I was really afraid. I just, I just kept... I, I, I never scheduled the exam, so I was just postponing it in my mind. Um, I thought I was going to take it by the end of summer, but then I... Because I, I graduated in 20, 2017, and I was going to take it, uh, I wanted to take it like over September. And then I was like, okay, let's do October. And then there was Thanksgiving. I was like, you know what, let's do after Thanksgiving. And then I remember my husband was like, no, that's it. We're going to schedule it. You're going to take it the, the sooner. And then I think the sooner date was like January 7th or 8th of 2018. Um, so when did I start reviewing? I think I started reviewing, that's tricky because... The way I, I studied for that exam was really interesting. I was learning a lot of the material and I remember I had a lot of sessions where I would just review. I would re constantly be reviewing the problems so that I don't forget them. Um, so, and then I remember I got into environmental engineering and I've never taken environmental and, and it really scared me because I, I, was, I was using Linder book book and it was very intimidating and there was a lot of concepts and a lot of words, a lot of words in the environmental engineering and I struggled. Um, and I remember I was like, you know what, I'm just going to power through this. And then I remember right after that, what I did, I started doing the easy problems again from previous subjects just to get my self-esteem up again and, conf and feel confident, right? I, went, I was like, you know what, sure, I'm not great or good at environmental engineering. I struggle with this topic. I don't know it well. I've never taken it. But, you know, there are 13 other subjects that I'm good at, right? And so that kind of really helps me gain confidence. I would say the biggest review that I've done where I was just reviewing during practice exams, I would say two weeks or three weeks before my exam. But now looking back, I would have probably reviewed maybe a month before just because there's so much material. And the other thing as well, guys, I think my exam was was slightly easier than what's what's now the FE exam. I feel like the, the FE exam 
2022 and this year is much harder. I remember my exam was very like a lot of the questions were straightforward questions where it's like I just needed one equation plug in and I was done right um, and luckily in the environmental engineering I didn't get any hard uh, problems or conceptual a lot of it was just like playing around with the units and then I got the answer I don't know if I got those correct but but yeah so that's that's my experience I don't know if that helped guys uh, but yeah let me know if you guys have any other questions um, if not I'll go ahead and uh, so again guys make sure that you guys uh, sh uh when you guys are done so let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen when you guys are when we're done with this live it's very important that you guys come back to these problems you know tomorrow or maybe sunday just to make sure that you guys got them okay all right so it, it, i am a little bit sad it is the last live we're gonna have but again it's not gonna be the last one this year i will try to do more lives uh, this uh, like sometime this year I will let you guys know hopefully for those of you guys who are taking your exam you wouldn't have to show up to those lives because you will pass uh, and then for those of you guys who will still be studying I'm hoping these a lot of these lives will help you guys um, the other thing also just before I forget please guys if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe it really helps the channel out um, and so the other thing I really want to talk about is some of the stuff that you guys mentioned yesterday in the live you guys mentioned some of the things that you guys really struggle with so let me know if you guys want me to discuss any of that i know some of you guys were talking about motivation consistency we talked a little bit about motivation yesterday and how it works um i i, I remember the ones that really stood out to me from what you guys mentioned yesterday was consistency and um and then just a lot of material to cover and to study and that in itself might feel overwhelming so let me know if you guys resonate with that and i'll go ahead and and share with you guys some tips on that let's see what i have here oh the other thing guys i do have a little surprise for you i almost forgot to share is that we do have sale in our courses right now this is just to think for those of you guys who've been with us this whole uh, week and for those of you guys who don't have uh, our courses I know that we have a lot of our students but for those of you guys who don't have our courses we do have our courses on sale just for uh, so the first 50 people who get our courses will get it on discount so if you guys are interested go ahead and comment on the chat coupon code and then one of my team member will send you guys uh, the coupon codes depending on which course you want to take so we have a sale on the bundle and then there's the morning afternoon and then the environmental course so go ahead and and uh, and, and share that in the chat okay um so let's let's see i think we have some comments here in the chat i want to go over it so we have um can you share tips to help finding things easier in the FE reference handbook? Ludlin, great question. And I actually have a whole series on our channel that talks about that. So go ahead and check that out. It's really going to help you guys. Uh, it's going to help you be faster. So guys, here's the thing. For those of you guys who pass the FE, I don't know why, but their computer is so slow, right? Like you try to get an equation and then you feel like it's 30 seconds it's taking like too long right and then you're timed and then so you get stressed and stuff and so I don't know why they have uh, they need to change their system and make faster computers uh, but this is why it's important for a lot of you guys to make sure that you are always studying with the reference handbook right and so this is why in our courses whenever we're studying whenever we're solving problems um, I always show you guys where the equation on the reference handbook I remember when I took my FE luckily because I was using it so much so many times when I was studying I didn't use it a lot a lot of the equations I already know right like uh, for example like the, the beam equation that we discussed that one that one I already know right uh, the trusses I probably won't remember it so I would have to grab it from the reference handbook uh, but like you know a lot of the equations uh, just because of practice you'll know them the other thing that I recommend is that make sure that you write down all the most common units that you use right so that way you don't have to keep going to the units back to the equation all of that is time consuming um, one of the biggest ones we covered in the pump power right it's like when you go from uh, the pound foot per second to horsepower you have to divide by 550 right so these things are important another common one is gallon per minute to cubic feet per second 
uh, let's see what other ones of course and then you have the inches to feet you have to make sure you remember those um, and I, I can't remember what other ones but when you guys are studying the units that you constantly see write them down in your cheat sheets and also review them before you FE that will also save you a lot of time uh, let's see what else we have and then you know there's certain ways like instead of using their search box which also takes forever and it's so slow to navigate through what you could do is like if you need to grab the tables on statics you can click dynamics go up and then that will take you to the statics tables right and again go ahead Ludlin go watch our uh, reference handbook uh, videos we have I think three where I talk about it and those tips are really going to help you to navigate through the reference handbook faster and then save you a lot of time all right okay awesome guys let's see what else do we have um we have alicio he's have you heard of dimension analysis co-worker mentioned it to me this week when i'm stuck on a problem dimensional analysis where which subject is that let me know which subject alicio i have not heard of that dimensional analysis no i have not heard of that see and the thing is also guys here's something alicio especially for you because your exam is getting closer um, you, you might hear people where they go like, oh, did you, this, you might get this on your exam, you might get this, and then you're going to start freaking out. Just try to tune everything out, quiet all the noises, and just focus on what you already have and the study material, and trust yourself and trust the process. Very important, guys. I've had so many students who would come to me and be like, my, you know, my friend just took the exam and then he got all of this, and I'm like, take a big breath you got this right you are gonna get a lot of the questions correct and then you know like two months two weeks or three weeks later they pass the fe it's all mental right yes you might get that dimensional analysis question but you still have 109 questions to get right right so don't forget don't focus on the questions you're gonna get wrong it's, it's not a good uh, mindset to have guys you're not there to score every single question you're not there to get a perfect score you're there to pass your FE. So you focus on the easy questions first. Get as many e questions as you can first. And then you do the medium ones or the long ones. And then you do the, th the difficult ones. And I've, I've interviewed so many of our students the last couple weeks. And I'll share that with you guys um, on our channel. But a lot of them, like I remember Sammy, I just interviewed him last week. He said that he did the, the easy problems first. And then after that, he had... Uh, 20 questions left and 10 of them where it's like they were just long and medium and he was able to do that and then and he filled his FE exam I think five times and and it was incredible because he said when he finished when he did those, those first 35 questions that were easy it gave him a boost of confidence like I got this I just got 35 questions I still have a whole hour to cover the other 15 or 20 questions like I got this right so that's the mindset that you guys need to go into um, yes you will have questions where you're gonna pause and be like oh my god I've never seen this before but don't spiral don't focus on that move on flag it don't waste your time go to the questions you already know come back to it and do the best you can later okay so that's my advice for all of you guys very important to keep these points in mind okay all right i hope at least you that helped and then also i'm actually interested just because i'm curious dimensional analysis i don't know which topic is that i've never heard of it it's weird um okay let's see i took the day off today because i was feeling some burnout stay healthy you all oh thank you for that reminder that's awesome um uh, Yes, I, I'm actually planning to take Sunday off. <laughs> I am I am starting to feel a little bit tired as well. So that's a great reminder, guys. It's very important that you guys take some time off, recharge. And this is something I want to actually talk about. I think somebody mentioned yesterday, talked about consistency. It's just like consistency and motivation. And I think the biggest thing that helps uh, with motivation, besides the stuff that we discussed yesterday, and consistency is making sure to know when to stop with like and listening to your body so when you listen to your body and your body is telling you like we're tired we need to take a break and you ignore it and you keep going you're gonna start easily to lose motivation and you're not gonna be consistent anymore because you just you're just tired and you burn out and you're not recharging and you're not listening to your body so i think that's really helpful if you guys want to stay consistent it's about having that um the, that whole healthy balance, right? You can't just be working and studying. You can't do that. I mean, you can if you want to, but you'll be miserable 
you're gonna be burned out the whole time you're not gonna be happy you're not gonna be enjoying the process and that's not the way to do it right you're gonna pass no matter what so might as well do it in a good healthy way where you're learning and enjoying the process this is part of your career right this is not just like i just want to get it done over with so i can move on with my life this is everything that you're learning right now. You're going to apply in your career. You're going to apply at your job. You're going to feel confident at your work. The more you learn, the more you grasp the concepts, the better for you and your career, right? So first, acknowledge that. Then you have to make sure that you are, you know, taking time to recharge, to rest. Don't underestimate those things. Those th like recharging, sleeping for long hours or enough hours, spending time with family, laughing, you know, going in an adventure, going for a hike. For those of you guys who are in California, beautiful mountains. Um, that I think that's the thing that I miss most about California, right? Go to the beach. If you're at, near the beach, go for a run, take your family, go for a walk. Go do something fun and forget about the FE, right? You can't just completely pause your life and just like work and study. You are going to burn yourself out. You're not going to be consistent and you're not going to want to keep doing this, right? And nobody will, right? It's normal. So it's very important that you, when you are studying, you're studying. When you're not studying, just don't think about the FE, right? Just go have fun with your family. Do something fun. And that's what's going to help you guys to stay consistent, to stay motivated, and to keep showing up. And of course, along with like making sure you're learning, making progress, all that good stuff that we talked about yesterday, okay? Let me know if that makes sense, guys. You know, this whole week we've been talking about... Uh, you know, do you want to pass your FE? You know, what's your goal for this year, 2023? You want to pass your FE, but don't forget about your other aspects of your life, right? Your health, right? Are you going to do anything to improve your health in 2023? Exercising is awesome for learning, for your mental health. It's great stuff. You know, if you, if you don't exercise, maybe try it out. I had a student, uh, Alex, who, you know, he failed his FE exam uh, like three times, couple times. We have his interview in our channel. And I, I had a call with him once and I'm like, Alex, you got to start exercising. He ignored me. He took his FE. He failed. And then he came back and he's like, you know what? I'm going to listen to you. So then he listened and then he got the afternoon course. We got him. We got him a good study plan. He started boxing. He started doing dancing. He started to enjoy life. And guess what? Four months later, he passed his FE. Right. And I, I, it's very important to have that whole healthy, balanced life, guys. It's going to help you with, with, with learning and everything. OK. All right. Let's see. I hope any of this uh, helps you guys or, or resonates with you guys. How do you feel? How do you deal with test anxiety? Oh, Charlene, that's a good one. A lot of people struggle with that. Um, that's a common thing. Test anxiety. Uh, in fact, I had I mean, I think a lot of my, our students had test anxiety. I would recommend Charlene. We're going to post uh, Sammy's interview. Not sure. I think in two weeks, I would recommend checking it out because he did have test anxiety. And he, he said, you know, one of the things that really helped him was just like practice, doing a lot of practice exams, actually, and timing himself, just putting himself in that exam environment uh, really helped him mentally prepare for the test. So that's what I would recommend. Um, the other thing as well, Charlene, I would recommend is, you know, exercise can really help exercising. I, I had a little bit of test anxiety when I took my exam. I was always anxious about school in general. I was always anxious about exams, even like in, in college, I was, I would always be so stressed, like right before the midterm, like I wouldn't be able to eat because I'm just nervous or finals. Um, and so I, that's something that I've always dealt with. Um, and I, you know, I remember the day of my exam or when my FE exam got closer the day before we actually I went hiking uh, with my husband in the mountains and I went for a run and that really helped me uh, and the other thing as well that I really try to practice is that when I'm doing problems right or during the exam if I start spiraling I would really make sure that I'm super aware of my thoughts and I'm not spiraling right so if I don't know a problem if my brain goes like oh that's it this we, we I mean you couldn't even get this problem how are we going to pass this exam? You're going to fail, right? Like before it gets to that point, like I go, I stop it and I'm like, nope, I'm going to do great. I'm going to flag this problem. I'm going to move on. And then until I find like a good problem. So this is something I always, I think I mentioned a couple of my videos where I told you guys um, where when I took my FE, I got there. I was super anxious. 
um, and and I, I couldn't solve the first problem. It was math really easy. Remember guys, I told you my exam was easier than what we have now. Uh, and I, I was super nervous. I couldn't do the first problem. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna flag it. I moved on. Second problem, still nothing. Third, nothing. Fourth, and then I got into like the fifth problem, which was guys, super easy. It was a polynomial. All I had to do is enter the numbers in my calculator, right? A, B, and C, and then solve for it. You get the two values, you plug in, you move on. And then that, I was able to solve that one. And then that helped me to bring my anxiety levels down and helped me to just like focus on the questions and focus on the exam. So Charlene, if you find yourself during the exam uh, spiraling or like you get a question you don't understand or don't know, just flag it and move on and try not to just try to be aware of your thoughts and try not to spiral. Uh, another one, we had a student, Andreza, we have her interview. She also really struggled with test anxiety. Uh, she took the FE exam first, she failed, then she came back, she had a good plan, and then she was doing a lot of meditation, um, and then she was she was exercising, and that also really helped her. So try these things, see if it works out for you. I, I hope any of this helps you, all of you guys who have that test anxiety, okay? All right, guys, and again, uh, let's see. Uh, do we have anything else, guys? Do we have any other questions? So, um, does breaking the practice exam in half be okay? Um, that's a good question. You know, actually, you, you know, guys, this and this is what again I always mention is that, you know, I share with you guys all these study tips and stuff, right? But you have to figure out what's gonna work for you, right? So I had a student, Alicia, who actually did that. He was like, I can't sit for like six hours and do a practice exam. So what he did, he did half Saturday and then the other half Sunday. And then I had another student who would do like two hours Monday, two hours Tuesday, two hours Wednesday, and then two hours Thursday. She just spread it out throughout the whole week. And you know, she passed her FE. So just the, the the I would recommend doing at least one of them where it's like a whole six hours just to get yourself mentally ready for the actual exam. But if you don't, but if your exam is getting closer and you don't want to tire yourself, then go ahead and break it down. And if you're gonna learn better that way, then go ahead and do it. Right? Again, this is guys a trial and error and just figuring out what's gonna work for you and for your learning style. Okay. All right, guys. What else we have? Okay, and then again, just a quick reminder, guys, we do have uh, we do have coupon codes for our courses. If you have any questions about our courses, please let me know in the chat and I will go ahead and answer it. But as probably most of you guys know, our courses, uh, well, first, they're lifetime access. So I wanted to create that. I wanted to create a course like that because I don't want you guys to think about the time pressure, right? Like I know we have a lot of our students here who are, you know, enjoying that. So they don't have to worry about access and they can just focus on learning because that's, that's the goal here. We want you guys to learn, feel confident as an engineer, pass your FE, and go do awesome things, excel in your career. And guess what? When you're ready for the PE, you can also use our material to help you prepare for the PE, okay? Um, so we have lifetime access. I mean, great lectures, I think. I'm, I'm sure a lot of our students would agree. Uh, I walk you through all the problems. Uh, we solve a lot of problems. We go over concepts and all that good stuff. So it's, it's a whole package. It has helped people from all all different backgrounds, you know, recent graduates, uh, students who didn't graduate from the US, students who've been out of school for a while, the longest students we had, he graduated from 1989. That, that was when he graduated and he, and he passed with us. We had the students who failed nine times and he passed with us. What else? We had the students whose major was mechanical and she took civil and she passed. Uh, we also had, uh, let's see, we also had a student whose major was, I think, petroleum, and she passed her FE civil because she was changing career paths as well. We had a student with business major. Uh, she took, so, so she took, uh, I believe, physics and calculus in college, um, and I think maybe statics as well, but I don't remember. And then she switched major to business because engineering was too expensive, and she wanted to take uh, night classes, uh, and with engineering program, she couldn't do that. And so she switched to business. She still ended up in the engineering industry. And one day her boss was like, oh, why don't you take your FE? And, and she didn't think she could. She figured out that she can. She enrolled in our course and literally five months later, she passed her FE. So she learned everything from our course. So it has everything that you need to pass your FE. Go ahead, if you are guys are interested, comment in the chat coupon code and we'll share it with you guys. We, we, the first 50 people who uses it, you'll get the coupon code. Um, 
Oh, and then the other thing as well is that we all we will be launching an afternoon course for mechanical, other disciplines, and environmental sometime this year. I was gonna do it last year, but I had some family uh, thing, and um, and um, it was 2022 was a tough year. I don't know if if you had a good year or a tough year, but if you had a tough year, I could relate. Um, and I just it was hard for me to focus on the courses and it was hard for me to create content for 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 those disciplines But I know a lot of you guys are waiting for it And I know a lot of you guys need it and I'm gonna do my best to help you guys with that as well And create those courses to help you pass your FE exam. All right um, If let's see do we have any other? Uh, questions. Oh and an IFA I forgot to answer you. So I know Ifa, you have our afternoon and morning course, right? Quick question for you. Uh, you said you're interested in the statics course. The question is, did you go through the statics course in the morning or sorry, the static section in the morning? If you did get to it and you still struggle, then go ahead and get statics. And then also we're going to go ahead and give you the practice exam for free. Okay. So for those of you guys who are our students, if you didn't get the, um, the morning and afternoon at the same time, and for whatever reason you got them at different times. Okay. Let us know. We'll give you access to the practice exam for free. Okay. And then, uh, if I, let me know if you got that. Okay. And then also guys, it, we also uh, offer payment plans in case you're interested in that. Okay. Let me know. Let us know, guys, um, in the chat. Whatever you guys need, whatever uh, help you guys need. Joe, weekly meetup this Saturday. I am still thinking about it. I'm feeling a little bit tired. We'll send you guys an email today, and I'll let you know if this is still happening. I'll try to do my best to figure out a way to have the weekly meetings. Either I'll show up or I'll have somebody uh, show up and help you guys with your questions and concepts. I am feeling a little bit low energy. So I'll, I'll see how I feel after today and we'll shoot you guys an email. Okay. All right. And I apologize. Uh, I'm going to try not to cancel it or at least have someone uh, show up to help you guys with, with FE problems that you guys may have. Okay. All right. If I, let me know if I answered your question. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other, uh, we have, please let me know about the frame problems included in FE other disciplines. Uh, I'm not sure if I got that Yusuf, go ahead and clear, you can clarify your question or just let me know and then send us an email and then we can do it. Any advice of you going on a vacation and in the midst of studying? Oh, Richard, that's a good question. In fact, Sammy, the students that failed the FE exam five times and he just recently passed his FE, he actually took a whole week off during in the middle of his studies. Um, depends how long your vacation, I actually would recommend it, you know, depends. Um, I think it could be very helpful. It can help you to regroup, reassess, uh, and then it can also help you digest everything that you've just covered, especially if it's a lot of information, you can go ahead and have fun. When you come back, the first day will be tricky to start studying again. So just be aware of that, but it will be you might have a better energy you might feel more recharged and you might your brain might be ready to like get all that information again so uh, try it I think I think it does work for a lot of people some people they get scared of doing that because they're like oh what if I forget the material what if so it just really depends on you and then how close your exam is I wouldn't of course take it like two weeks before your exam but you know if it's two months or one month away from your exam maybe maybe try it give it a try especially if you feel like you need it okay all right let's see still deciding to still, still trying to decide if I need it I feel confident in most I may just need more practice instead of the other course okay if I yeah so if you, you know maybe what you need to do if is just go back to this static section right and go back to those problems and then just do them again and then if you struggle then if you feel like oof, I'm missing a lot of concepts then that's when you should get it but don't get it if you don't need it I don't want you to waste your time or money the goal here is that how can we get you guys, right? Get you here. You study for the next four or five, maybe six months, depending on your learning style, your schedule. And then after that, you go in, you pass your FE. That's the goal. We don't want, even, even though we did offer unlimited lifetime access, I still want you guys to f figure out a way to pass your FE faster because it, you know, it's, it gets tricky and tiring and you don't want to be in the journey for years. You know, we've had so many students who've been trying to pass this exam since like 2014 or 2016 and they just kept failing again and again and buying more courses and because they, they lose access and all that so yes we want you guys uh we are giving you lifetime access so that you guys 
don't have to worry about the the pressure of the time but then also how can we get you guys to pass your fe faster so that you can excel in your career faster right and then also uh, the recession proof your career as well right because we had a student uh, Alex again I talked about him earlier uh, during COVID he got laid off and he was one of the first ones because he didn't have, have his EIT right and we want to make sure that you guys have your EIT so that you are not in that situation and even if you do get laid off you can always find another job because now you have your EIT right so these are just a couple things to keep in mind and remember okay all right, guys. Awesome. My wife wanted to change careers since she has seen me study. Awesome. That's great. Look at that. You guys are like motivating other people and stuff. Okay, guys. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. As usual, I, I really enjoyed the time with you guys this week. I'm probably going to see some of you guys either this Saturday or the following Saturday. In the meantime, keep up the good work, keep studying. Uh, we are going to post a video this Monday on YouTube, so make sure to check it out. Uh, I, I forgot what it was about. I filmed it yesterday. Anyways, uh, you guys will see it. And then um, in the meantime, please, guys, if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us to our email. Uh, so Our email is hello at engineer.com. Please remember that we are here to help you pass your FE, right? So we'll do everything we can to make sure that you guys achieve your goal, okay? And make sure, you know, for this year, don't just have career goals, but make sure you have other goals as well, like family, career, right? Life, uh, mental health, or just health in general, whatever it is, right? It's important to have that whole balance, healthy life balance, right? All right, guys. Um, again, it was great uh, spending this week with you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and uh, and I hope, I really hope all of you guys have a great year and pass your FE exam, all right? All right, guys, thank you and have a great productive weekend. Bye, guys. Thank you.